Hey, man, I don't want to disrespect the great John Madden. Rest in peace. I know the NFL is going to honor him during Thanksgiving weekend. We miss Madden, but I feel like we do have our modern-day Madden. Uh, he may be Madden 2.0, maybe a poor man's Madden. I don't care. But nobody shows more enthusiasm for the game of football than Brian Baldinger out there. We love his breakdowns. He was in the Bay Area. I don't know if he came to Chase Center Saturday night, but hopefully he didn't because the Warriors blew that game against the Thunder. But, Baldy, good morning, my man. What's going on? How was your trip to the Bay? Good morning, Bonte. Joe, uh, it was good. You know, it's always uh, it's always fun going out there to Levi. And, you know, and, you know, look, the, the, the ride home, the red eye, and straight back to the film with no sleep. <laughs> I never look forward to that, but that's what, uh, you know, they've got coffee and all kinds of things for that. (laughs) You know, I just got to say, you know, I was was having this conversation with some guys in the Eagles um, before last night's game, and there's just some teams when you're around them, you just feel like you're around a collection of stars. Mm. If you go down the field at Levi Stadium on Sunday, I mean, everywhere you look, there's a star on the 49ers. (laughs) And you win your games, you win games and big games because of your stars. And whether it's Fred Warner or Bosa or, you know, Debo, like you just look in every direction and there's a star. And it's, I don't know that there's a more, look, they pay their stars to be stars. We show them all show up on Sunday and you go, this, how, how in the world could, could they lose a big game? Like how, like, what's it going to take? For a team to lose like that, it's going to take a team like the Eagles yep. with stars, maybe Dallas. But, you know, that's where this league is at right now, where it's such a star-driven business, and you can feel it when you're around that 49er team. That's interesting because I was talking with our producer, Sam Lubman, last night. I feel like this is by far and away, in terms of top-end talent, the best team the Niners have had since the 94 Super Bowl, right? Like, it, it's just, they're loaded everywhere. And let, let's start with Fred Warner, because I saw you put out a video on Fred Warner. My big takeaway Monday was Fred Warner was unbelievable. He was everywhere. Instincts, uh, his ability in zone coverage to drop off of one guy and feel that Baker was going to throw to the other guy coming in on the slant, uh, his ability to pressure flying, you know, over the line to stuff a guy on a on a on an end around play. Like he was everywhere. And then I saw he responded to one of your videos online saying, Baldy, my man. So just break down Fred Warner for the audience out there. Because I feel like I'm watching an all time 49er. And when we throw him into the category of Patrick Willis, people feel like I'm disrespecting Willis. I'm not. I am elevating Fred Warner because I think of him in the same breath as Patrick Willis, even though their games are so different. Well, I mean, they, they both came in and they started day one in this league and have dominated in this league, you know, since day one. I mean, Fred Fred's just an amazing person, period. Um, just just his personality and just the way he conducts himself. He's an amazing individual. But, you know, he, he puts the amazing, nice guy, individual stuff, like, on the shelf when he puts, you know, the jersey on to go out on the field. Like, he's a maniac. The guy is just a freaking maniac out there. Like, I don't, so, like, nobody processes information faster than that. Like, I don't know what kind of chip, like, what kind of Intel chip he's got in his brain to process information. I like to, like, get inside that thing. But he <laughs> he never missteps. He plays so fast. And then it's one thing to play fast, but then to get there in just a violent frame of mind to always be in a position to hit or make a play. He's, he's simply, like, I think he's actually separated himself now quite a bit. I mean, there's there's some great linebackers, like Bobby Wags and Roquan. I mean, there's some great inside linebackers. Right. But I really don't think anybody is in Fred Warner's category right now. Nobody's doing more and making more plays than what he's doing. You know, Baldy, I, I kind of touched on that yesterday. I said it's Fred Warner, and number two, there's a big separation, a Red canyon size gap between Fred Warner and the second-best linebacker. If it wasn't for T.J. Watt or Miles Garrett, he'd probably win DPLY running away here. But, you know, the pass rushers get all the love here. But Fred Warner, no doubt, one of the best linebackers That's in football. That's actually a great, great point, Bonte. Yep. Nobody ever mentions a li- an inside linebacker. Why? Why is that, Baldy? Of the year. Why is that? Because he's the quarterback of this defense. This guy's guarded C.D. Lamb 40 yards down the field. He's deflected passes left and right. He's got picks. He's got forced fumbles. He's a great blitzer. Why don't linebackers you know get what? the love that they used to? I'm going to start a campaign today for Fred Warner for defensive player. I of the love year. that. I'm just going to like like let's just think outside the box yep. and forget about sacks for one moment. Yep. And let's let at because look, you could play 700 plays 
and you could get 18 sacks in four forced fumbles. Right. And you could be the defensive player of the year. Or you could play 1,100 plays, never come off the field, yep. stop touchdowns, sack quarterbacks, force fumbles, fumble recoveries, you know, tip balls. <laughs> you know, I mean, who's doing more? Right. You know, I asked Shasky before the season, I said, this is going to be Fred Warner's DPOI campaign. Some people thought I was crazy. Did he knock the soul out of Najee Harris in week one in Pittsburgh? And he just has not stopped since then. So I want Fred Warner to get his love because I think he's playing some good linebackers, some of the best linebackers I've seen in the last 10 years. Now let's get to the other side of the football here, Baldy. Brock Purdy, you talk about processing. The way Brock Purdy's process, processing everything is at an MVP level. 21 to 25, and I don't care about pass rating. I don't care about QBR. The guy was good on Sunday, and he's hitting deep balls. He's hitting intermediate passes. The R strip is there. Brock Purdy's playing at an elite level, and it's good to see him bounce back from that three-game losing streak where he turned the ball over five times in five quarters. Yeah. Uh, he's amazing. He was just amazing. Uh, the way he sees the field. You talk to everybody about him, whether you talk to McCaffrey or to Kittle or to Debo. And they all just kind of just shake their head They're, because they they can't even fathom the outside noise of what they say about Brock. Like, it doesn't even register to them. They know they're playing with an elite player. They know it. And so the outside noise is, ah, you, you can't throw the deep ball. Oh, his arm strength. Oh, you know, he's a, he's a product of the system. You know, like, they're just... It's like just white noise to them right now. Doesn't every quarterback like just, play in the system? I mean, that's the stupidest yeah, thing. Everybody I mean. has a system. Like, that guy's, and then you talk to him. Like, I've been around all the great quarterbacks at some point pregame. You know, a lot of these guys, Drew Brees, like, they're just in the zone. You can, you can say hello to Russell Wilson. He'll be nice. He'll say hello. But they're, on their, they're in their zone. You go up and talk to Brock Purdy. You can be talking about an ice cream parlor in Ames, Iowa. And he, you got his attention. <laughs> like, that guy is, like, as relaxed as you can possibly get. And I kind of like that. It, it kind of tells you that he, he already, you know, like it's, like, it's like that big test, the big final exam, right? Right. And you've been, like, just jamming yourself and all-nighters. And, you're, and you know, you're just all the way up until the point where you, you, you walk into the class, take the test. And you're just jammed. And then there's this... That one nerd over there, <laughs> like he's out playing pickup basketball the day of the, of right. the like he's already knows the answers. He already knows the answers to the test. He doesn't need to cram anymore. I kind of feel like Brock Purdy is a little bit like that guy. You, you know, Baldy, I, I'm looking at him and I think we always look like height, weight, speed. Can you throw the ball through a brick wall? All these yeah. things that don't translate. His feel, his pocket presence, his ability to step up, his processing, you talk about it like after the snap. To me, pre-snap, recognizing I've got man-to-man -man over here with Ayuk. If I just hold for long enough and, and, and teardrop one to the inside of the field, I'm going to give my guy a chance to make a play. Like right now, I don't know how whose brain I'm taking over his, you know, in terms of quarterback play. But he does so many things so well. And I'm just blown away at the way he climbs up in the pocket protects himself, throws perfectly to a guy in stride downfield. Like, I, I feel like the way we talk about quarterback, he doesn't fit any of those descriptive things, and he doesn't do the highlight stuff, yet all I do is watch this dude make unbelievable plays. Why doesn't he get the love? Like, what is it, Baldy? Joe, you know who you're describing right there. You're describing Joe Montana. Like, you go out and shake Joe Montana's hand back in the day. Like, there's nothing that wows you about Joe except the way that he played the game yeah, and the fact that he never felt pressure. And if you need to, to go have a game-winning Super Bowl drive in the final two minutes, he could be looking at John Candy on the sideline. And, you know, I mean, all that stuff is legendary right now. But maybe, maybe that's what we're looking at. Because you shake his hand, there's – like, he, he might have the smallest hands I've ever shook from a quarterback. Really? Huh. Yeah. There's nothing – and then, you know, you look at his frame. He doesn't have a big frame. You know, um, I don't know how fast he is, but that guy is – like anybody that wants to say, uh, I told you, I, you know, I, okay, he throws an interception against Cleveland, whatever. Uh, he throws an interception against – ah, I told you, this is who he is. Now, okay. Like I just saw him – that's a good defense in Tampa. They have mm -hmm. a lot of good players, um, guys that have won Super Bowls. Like the, nobody throws more in cuts than the San Francisco 49ers. You saw – you know, you saw him to Kittle. You saw him to Ayuk the other day. You saw the one to Debo. Like, those throws 
are dangerous throws. Mm. Like, you have to layer those throws. You've got Devin White jumping on his tippy toes, <laughs> you know, trying to get in the right. passing lane. Levante right. David getting depth on his drops, trying to take those throws away. You know, safety's driving on the ball. Like, you miss throw those the way we saw a guy that used to play quarterback in San Francisco. They get tipped or picked. Mm. Like, he's going right into the lion's den. And those balls are, like, hitting those guys in stride. How about wow. the slide in, fact, in the first I told down. my stat guy the other day, I said, just – Keep one stat for me today. Huh. I just want to know the number of yards after the catch. Wow. Because that's a function of accuracy. Yeah, that, that's It was great. well over 100 of 333 mm. yards. No doubt. Now, obviously, the touchdown to IU, you know, like, you know, you're going to get a lot on that play. But, yeah, well over 100 yards. Baldy here on the Morning Ross on 95.7 The Game. He is presented by our proud partner, Golden State, serving the Bay Area for three generations. Building better starts with Golden State. When you succeed, we succeed. Visit GoldenStateLumber.com. You'll bring up Brandon Ayuk and... Uh, Shask and I have had some good debates about Brendan Ayuk and who he is. He had 1,000 yards last season, and maybe it's diluted because you play 17 games. But right now he has 43 catches for 831 yards and nine, over 19 yards per catch. It's the best in the NFL with guys over 25 catches. You talk about stars and guys getting paid. It feels like he's next in line, and he's the guy that I think people have been sleeping on. Boy, you think Kansas City could have used a Brendan Ayuk last night? You know, you think about so many teams around the league. Brendan Ayuk right now is no doubt the number one wide receiver in San Francisco. What if what about his game has improved here, Baldy, as he's in year number four with the 49ers? Well, I think he understands the offense. And then, you know, everybody has to figure out the quarterback. Like every you know, you could change quarterbacks. The offense doesn't change, but the quarterback and how he sees the field, what you know, how he reads your breaks, you know, your options, um, coming out of a break, where to put it. Like, every, you have to learn how to play. So, he, you know, Brock Purdy's played 18 games. So, you know, you go from Jimmy to Brock, it means that there's a difference. There's just going to be a difference. Um, you know, some days uh, they're going to figure out not necessarily how to take you away, but you could have an obstructed view right here. You could have a blitz that takes you away. You could, you know, have a guy that pressures you at the line of scrimmage not open right away. So all those things happen in the passing game, but yet – uh, one thing about Ayuk is it seems like he's always open, you know, and like that's a function of being a good route runner, mm -hmm. uh, of a guy that can, you know, in route running, it's an, inter it's an interesting science when you really study it because what a great route runner is really doing is he can change directions without losing speed. And so some guys, they almost have to like come down to a, almost to a stop in order to change directions. Mm. Some guys just have the ability to, whether it's their ankle flexion or whether it's their body type. Like, not everybody can change directions without losing speed. But Brandon Ayuk can do that. Mm -hmm. And so he naturally separates for man coverage. And it gives you, the, the quarterback, a little bit more leeway mm. with where he puts the ball. It doesn't have to be pinpoint perfect, mm. although with Brock on Sunday, he was, he was pretty much pinpoint. Uh, let's get into some, like, deep X's and O's when it comes to the defense. Obviously, we'll get to the... Hufunga injury and and what that means for Jair Brown. I thought he made a couple of nice plays, but putting Diamond or Lenore in the slot, adding Chase uh, to this to this defensive line, it feels like whatever they've done schematically, or maybe it's just the pass rush is winning. Like they look like their old selves defensively again, um, and the coverage syncing up with the pass rush. I don't know what it is. So Boldy, as you're watching it, is it is it personnel upgrades? Uh, have they changed some things on the back end? Why are they finally getting home? Well, I asked Nick that on Sunday, and I said, hey, you know, the addition of Chase and blah, 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 and he's like, hey, it helps when the quarterback has to hold the ball. Mm. Now, Baker got into a quick rhythm at times and was hitting a lot of four- and five-yard passes uh, on rhythm. Where the defense line simply doesn't have a chance, um, you know, to really get home. It's just the ball's out too fast. That's what Kirk Cousins did. That's what Joe Burrow did. You know, they're just hitting with quick hitters. And if you allow that to happen and the quarterback is just on target, they can kind of move the ball on you. But pass rushers need the quarterback to hold the ball, whether it's because it's third and long, second and long, play action passes, deep drops. Pass rushers need help. And so Nick was saying, hey, sometimes it's good when they cover really good on the back end. And so that's a, you know, pass rush is a function of a lot of different things down a distance, good coverage scheme it's not all just 
winning one-on-ones all the time. Right. And so I think that's what you're seeing right now. You're seeing a function of all those things. Jair Brown, <laughs> filling in for Talanoa Hufanga. We heard a lot of hype about him. Why, why'd you laugh? Oh, we love to break that. We, yeah, oh, no, I saw the video. Well, I retweeted you know, it's it. It's interesting. <laughs> so, you know, he's a Penn State kid. Yep. And um, there was a lot of good safeties in this draft. Sidney Brown, Pittsburgh drafted him. But I broke down, you know, his nickname is Tig. So I broke him down, like, um, before the draft, like in, in April. And I loved him. Like, he was he he had he was a takeaway machine. And he did a lot of things in Penn State's defense. And as soon as I put his video out there, <laughs> the head coach at Penn State, Tony Franklin, like, he checked in. You know, he checked in. He goes, what you're saying, Baldy, is what we saw for three years here. <laughs> like, he is... Like, those three plays he made in the end zone, yep. you know, one on Evans, the interception on the tip. The separation. Like, you know, knocking the ball loose yeah. from, you know, Kate Otten. Um, that's him. Like, he – and nobody – like, Hufanga is, is an amazing person and player. I, I feel sick about what's happened to yeah. him. But I'm, I'm telling you, this, this kid is going to be – the next great safety in San Francisco, I believe. Wow. 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 I love that. All right. Wow, I mean, that's that, high praise. I mean, yeah, Baldy, is. you don't give out praise like that. That's because I feel like the Hufanga injury is a very big one. And now they're asking a rookie. And, and I, I'm just worried that he's going to get, you know, the learning curve as they're trying to chase for a Super Bowl here. It's going to be tough. Look, <laughs> like you're going to go play Seattle on Thursday, and they've got 15 rookies on the roster. Nobody has more rookies. But Pete Carroll, I mean, he tells me this all the time. Like, he wasn't afraid to play freshmen at USC. He's not afraid to play rookies in the NFL, if they're the right guys. Right. Because while you may make mistakes, Joe, early, if they're the right guys, they're not going to repeat those mistakes. They're going to learn from them, and they'll be better players. I feel like Tig, you know, he was the first pick. They only had a third-round pick. was the first, And I felt like they got the right guy. Like, you go through, you sit around – you know, for most of two days, and everybody's picking, and you're just sitting back, and you're like, who are they going to take? And they take Jair Brown. I'm like, they got it right. Ooh. They got it right. Wow. You know, like everybody needs safeties. Everybody is playing three safeties. At Get this kid on the field somehow. Well, he's getting on the field for an unfortunate incident. I feel like this kid's growth is going to be really fast. Yeah, and Niners have done that. You mentioned Fred Warner starting from day one. Dre Greenlaw, his rookie year, had to fill in for Quan Alexander. Oh. Made one of the biggest plays in 2019, stopping Will Disley at the goal line Bosa. up in Seattle to win the NFC West. Nick Bosa, no doubt about that. Great point, Bobby. By the way, Bonte, you know, I don't think that there's an inside linebacker tandem. <laughs> oh, not not. Uh, there's none better than Dre and, and Fred, but one of the reasons why they're the best is they literally have played five full years together. Yep. Like you can't you'll go around the league. You can't find a tandem that's been together for five years. No, even Willis and Bowman didn't play together for five years, man. It was short lived, even though they were great. That's why we hold Greenlaw and Warner in such high regard here. Real quick on Seattle and then we'll get the Monday night football before we let you go, Baldy. Seattle. What problems do they pose for the 49ers here on Thursday night? A short week. They're a little banged up with Kenneth Walker III and, of course, Geno Smith. What problems do they pose, though, for the 49ers after they dropped one uh, to the L.A. Rams? Well, I mean, there's D.K. Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I mean, that's a problem. Because I don't care how well you pa- rush the passer or how well you cover, both those guys are capable of making sensational plays. They just are. D.K.'s been hot the last couple of weeks. And he, he can just change the game on one play. So that's a problem. And then defensively, like this Boye Mafe going into last week, I haven't watched the game yet against the Rams. I'm going to watch it this afternoon. But, um, you know, he had seven straight games with a sack. Some of these young guys, like this Devin Witherspoon yeah. is a problem. Yeah. Like this guy, he hits the way Ronnie Lott hit. Wow. Like this guy is a game-changing corner. And he, I mean, he, he doesn't, he's just an amazing, like he's got a big smile on his face, but that kid loves football and he loves to hit. And so Bobby Wagner is just as smart as they come. He knows this offense. You know, he knows this division. So, you know, you've, you've got a division game. And they, they took the 49ers to the brink in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. It took a great play by Amenahu to get the ball out of Geno Smith's hands mm-hmm. right in the, the, when the game was in the balance to change the game. And that might take that on Thursday night. Whew. Can't wait for this rivalry to be renewed. Baldy, wait. in honor of Thanksgiving and John Madden, I always think of the Traducan. Yeah. You have the number one overall pick. You're sitting at the table. Every yeah. dish ever made is available. Brian Baldinger is grabbing what with his number one overall pick? 
Uh, I'm just taking the biggest uh, bone-in ribeye that I can find. <laughs> Like it's never going to change. I'm a carnivore, right? So I just, I all I eat is meat, you know. And I've got, you know, I'm the healthiest I've ever been. So horse you can just give me a big bone, and I don't need a fork or knife. I don't need anything. Utensils. I know. Just you give me a big That's bone nice. and ribeye, um, and let me go to work. You know, Baldy, I'm a little stressed about Philadelphia right now. We can't overlook Seattle. No, we'll get to Philadelphia next week. But damn, what a win at Arrowhead Stadium for those guys. Huge win. God, I can't stand their fan base. Oh. But that's a tough team, man. God, they know how to win. They just find ways. Yep. They find ways. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Howie Roseman, the general manager, made two moves basically at the trade deadline. They <laughs> traded for Kevin Byer, yep. and they picked up Bradley Roby off the street. And both those guys came up with the two biggest defensive plays all night. So, I mean, they just they never stop building. They never stop batting. Like, all they think about is winning a championship. Yep. And all Jalen Hurts does is win. Yep. They're 9-1 for the second year in a row. You know, you think about all the great 49er teams. I don't know this off the top of my head, so I might be wrong. Right. But I'm not sure if any of those great teams were ever 9-1 and one in back-to-back -back years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Not Unbelievable win for them. Now, they won championships, so right. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Who cares? But, you know, I know one year they were 15-2. and two. Uh, I think they were started 1-2, and two, and then they went on and won every game like in 94. So, uh, But, yeah, 9-1 and one, two years in a row. Like, they win games. They find ways. Unbelievable. Two quick things for you, Baldy, before I let you go. One, you know, I got to ask, where are you going to be at this weekend? I'm going to be right in Philadelphia, Buffalo and Philadelphia. Oh, oh my gosh. Good to see that yeah. game. Let's oh, go, wow. Buffalo. <laughs> uh, happy Thanksgiving, yeah, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving, Baldy. Honestly, we, thank you. Family, and look, the yours. NFL is honoring John Madden. We have to honor oh, you, yeah. Baldy. Check this sound Listen out this. right here. We have to bring this up. All right. Like every team has a Baldinger on it. There's been three brothers in a bad offensive line. Mike Shad is a normal starting left guard. He's been injured. Baldingers come in. And then the big play, Fred Barnett. But today, this guy Baldinger's done a heck of a job. I mean, you hate to pick out a, you know, you know, Brian Baldinger, but he really does. He and Heller on that left side, that's where they've been getting all those yards. John Madden. You Honor to you know, Baldy. nothing, nothing sounds like football oh, than when John Madden is talking. But when he, but you know, this that was 1992. Yep. Guess the same. Okay, it's 30 dog. years ago. There's no <laughs> social media. When John Madden is talking about you on national TV yeah. during the playoffs, like every single person in your world, starting with your family, hears it. Yep. And you know, <laughs> there was no way that you know, there's yeah. like right. the, what we do today. Like, that was a big deal back then. Uh, I mean, when Lawrence Taylor said on his documentary, the Madden documentary, I cried. No, Shaska, you cried, it's too. One of the Lawrence Taylor ever. said this, and I couldn't believe it. He goes, you know, when I knew Madden was coming to the stadium to call my game, I knew I had to bring it up. I had to give him all, like, not for Belichick, not for Parcells, <laughs> not for Pepper Johnson, not for Madden. Carl Banks, but for John Madden. So the respect that Matt, the players have for John Madden and the respect that Madden had for you back in 1992, that's why we respect you, Baldy, because you remind me so much of Madden. Nobody, nobody's ever going to be John Madden. I'm not saying that no. at all. But you remind me so much of him because of the love of the game, the love that you have for the game. I appreciate and that, your crazy Bronte. personality. That means, a that means a lot. Hey, I want to just tell you one thing, guys. So I'm pulling in to Levi Stadium. You know, it's it's just a, right. a traffic jam getting in there. Oh, yes, so no. people, I'm, I'm, I'm just driving my car, going in there. It's uh, it's 9.30 in the morning. Uh -huh. I can't tell you how many fans, like, st were beeping the horns at me. I had my window down. <laughs> beeping the horn at me going, I can't wait to listen to you, to Joe and Bonte on Tuesday morning with you wow. guys. I, I must have heard it from 20 different people. Wow. All right, so I'm just giving you guys your yeah. credit and the credit that, that's due you. No, we appreciate Baldy, we it, man. You. My it, dad loves you. He wants me yeah. to make sure you know. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. I'm Baldy. coming out. I'm coming out in three weeks for that Seattle we'll, game. We'll make sure we'll make something happen. We'll make sure we'll make something happen. No right, doubt guys. about it. We'll hit the weights. Yeah. Too, Baldy, happy Thanksgiving, man. Okay. Happy holidays. Yeah, yeah I'm not hitting the weights with you, Baldy. That's all Shasky. I'm not embarrassing myself, Baldy. I've been working out. Baldy, happy Thanksgiving, brother. See you, buddy. All right, Brian Baldy, man. Always good stuff here. We're a little